No predetermined agenda topics will be scheduled, yet some rules do apply. Employee personnel matters are cons considered confidential and therefore should not be brought up. Address the board as a whole. Do not single out individual board members. Though a majority form of the board will be present, no official board actions will be taken. No decisions will be made, no votes will be taken, official meeting minutes will not be taken. And so I invite the first speaker up to the podium, please. You just add your name and come on up. Hi, I'm Suzanne Martin. And uh, I don't know if all of you got to watch that, the candidate forum, that live stream, um, but there was a discussion there by some of the candidates that they thought approaching the legislate, legislators in person, going to Madison and talking to them in person, face to face about the state fund. I don't know where you guys are on this, but about getting the funding <coughs> increase. Um, I did see the article where I know there was a letter written, but I was wondering if there were plans in the works to get your attorneys to go with and they probably get you on the floor. Or I don't know how things are with COVID now as far as getting in to see somebody, but to make appointments and get face to face to increase, to get the increased funding, because that's really what you guys should be working on now. That is you put all the policy stuff aside and, and make sure we have a place where you can have these policies apply. Um, you might even want to engage students to come with, give them talking points, but make sure they stay on those. It could be like a class thing, whatever. I mean, but you, I don't know. I think it's a good idea. And the other thing, um, I want to thank the board, all of you, because I think that the actions you all have taken over the last year, last two years, probably going forward, I'm anticipating, given the makeup of the board, I want to thank you because I think what you've done has motivated so many young people to vote. And there's going to be more of them that graduate, that turn 18, that will vote. And I think what you've done here is you have motivated that group. So you should be proud of that. Thank you. Thank you. Suzanne, I, I just wanted to, to mention, I, I couldn't be happier that I couldn't be happier that you, you brought up uh, the idea of some legislative advocacy. Um, I, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that you'll be able to be here throughout the evening. Uh, there are a couple of updates uh, on some very recent activities. I think you'll be really pleased okay. uh, with the level of, of activity from the board. Um, absolutely. Um, I'll actually be giving an update later. Um, so I actually attended the Wisconsin School Board Association um, Capital Day. So in the morning, we actually had a session where they went through what the current funding is, which Jeff always does a great job of informing us, as well as different political views on different topics. And then, which was bipartisan, there was both sides of the aisle that I shared. And in the afternoon, we had appointments that were set for us by actually the lobbyists for WASB. So that we get time slots at each of the offices. And I actually ended up attending several of other offices because I know I've been involved in legislation before. That's great. But I don't get how the funding, like how partisanship enters into it at all <clears throat> um, for school boards, period. But I mean, for the funding. And that should be the focus. Let's get that going. I really appreciate your efforts too. And I look forward to hearing what you've done. Absolutely. No, I'm glad I'm glad you'll be here throughout the meeting. There's another update on, uh, on joint finance as well. And um, I'm, I'm happy to know that members of the public are uh, in tune uh, to uh, some of the financial issues that are uh, that we're facing at school. And I encourage you to share your concerns, your understanding uh, of our uh, financial troubles. Uh, with other members of the community. At this point, it is, in fact, really what we need. We need uh, a much greater awareness uh, of the funding inequities and, uh, and, the, and the problems on budgeting that we're facing at the school. Thanks for your comments, Suzanne. Thank you.
Hello all, good evening. Um, my name is Marie Simonson. And maybe on that funding, uh, just a question, because I don't know where this would go. There's you know, been various turnovers at the various school boards and um, administration across the Arrowhead District. Is there ever a possibility to consider a combination of these schools? You know, I live in the North Lake area. North Lake needs more students. Burton has a lot of students. Who, who would be the people that would be party to that discussion so we could have, you know, candidly, there might be opportunities across there for funding, for improvement in the schools, use of the buildings. I just, I, I'm seeing that there could be some, I don't know if it's this board, but who would be parties to that? If you want to jump in. So since each of our feeder schools is a district unto itself, it would literally be the school boards for the schools that you're considering. There have been efforts along those lines in the distant past that ended badly. And, but I think that we're at least a generation removed from those last efforts. There's been some discussions even within our board about what that path might look like. And I think the consensus on what that path might look like would be two of our feeder districts getting together and deciding to join and having that be successful. And then, you know, being a, an example to our other feeder districts that this might be a route that we could go. There certainly is the high school district would uh, be receptive to a combination of our feeder districts, but that has to come from them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. uh, Marie, what you're talking about is, is uh, typically called consolidation. Okay. And there have been some discussions even recently uh, that uh, board members from uh, all of the, uh, you know, K through eights and the high school were, um, you know, invited to and, and did participate in. So, uh, uh, what what uh, Tim is alluding to is, uh, uh, I think that that groundswell that will come from uh, two of those uh, uh, feeder schools uh, entering into some discussions. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely seems like opportunity. I mean, the referendum didn't pass for North Lake, so there needs to be something that happens in, in that particular district. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, there's this object. Um, and just, oh, sorry, I did not get a chance to attend the working meeting last night, but I heard, heard um, my husband had attended and was listening in and I heard that there was some discussion about, um, I think it is respecting and including everybody's opinions and things. And so I was going to ask again, if the board would be considering to have some sort of consultant come in, do some DE and I work for you guys, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I just went to a conference up in Green Bay last week about safer schools and safer communities for children and learned quite a few things. Um, and there are plenty of groups that provide that kind of training for school boards and um, staff, students, things like that. I also have a personal connection with somebody who I would be willing to um, sponsor to come in. Um, and so I think that I would really like you guys to consider doing that. If that is one of your board norms that you guys are working towards, then I think that would be a fantastic use of your time. Um, and then another thing that I learned about at this conference was some of the laws regarding uh, student privacy. And so I don't know as where this is because I didn't see it on the agenda again, uh, but for policy for, I don't remember the number, but it is the one where the board was requesting access to campus. And I was asking specifically if you guys have reviewed that with lawyers to find out if that meets for bug requirements or not. If you can access student information, then is that something that board members have a legal right to have? So I just want to make sure that that was going to be addressed or had already been reviewed. I didn't know it has. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just chime in. Um, access to student information, whether that was attendance or grades, that would not be the case. So any pupil records that are confidential would not be accessible um, to board members. 
if that access to Canvas was granted, whether okay. that means for a three-week trial or on a permanent basis, it would be course materials, would be the curricular materials. It wouldn't be students' assignments or grades or attendance. Okay, that's so good. we would be yes. Thank you. Very, very good. legally sound. Okay, great. Um, and, for, and for clarity, that that wasn't the request either. Just just so you understand, it, the the board never requested to have access to. Students well, I didn't think you had. I just didn't know if that could be separated. Oh, from your sure. That's gotcha. that's why I just wanted to make sure about that. Okay. Um, thank you. I do think that it's still a. A uh, slippery slope, as you might say. Um, I've heard so, several board members call that when you guys were discussing um, uh, English text to be used and whether or not you guys, like how much information you guys need. You know, you guys had the English department come in and give you like fantastic presentation about the immense amount of work that goes into selecting the titles that they choose. And, um, and you know, I think that as parents, we all see, you know, we all have access to that. Um, but I don't know as if the board, does that get into interfering with day-to-day -day operations then? Because that's not something the board is supposed to be doing, correct? So I really think that that policy should be not considered. So that's all. Thank you, Darcy. Is there anyone else? Okay. What did we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could I just make a, a comment about a, one of the items discussed? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Maureen brought up consolidation, and I think you had mentioned, but also some of the comments in social media that I've seen in terms of, wow, there's four superintendents of eight that are retiring or resigning. Is now the time to combine districts? And I just want to let people know that is a multi-year process. So I don't want there to be any confusion that, as Kim said, there's been some conversation, and I would call it learning, about what is consolidation, what's involved with different districts at that learning level. But that's not a quick decision. If two districts are going to do that, I, I'm not an expert myself, but I believe it's at least a three-year process. So it's a, it's a long-term fix, not, oh, there's four empty positions, let's do it now. That one is coming. Oh, definitely nothing new fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think we'll close this part of our uh, session and uh, we will look to uh, to hold our, our board meeting at, at seven o'clock. Thanks everyone.